this is Bob Noxious, working with DNN. I'm standing here with Shelby Shattered. Shelby Shattered of the Boston Derby Dames. This is really an honor to be standing here with Shelby. It's been, I'm glad that I was even able to get a hold of you because I know it's a busy weekend. It's already been a big weekend for you guys. And, you know, let's let's talk a little first, Bob. If you weren't paying attention last night, do you remember what the final score was yesterday? Oh my God, I think it was 112 to 40, I think. I'm not positive. Let's just say that the two point loss that they had to Carolina last year was, they came back with a vengeance and, and they wanted to make a statement. Uh, Boston made a very strong statement yesterday. Um, they, they surpass Carolina, they take Carolina out of the fight for the Nationals, and how did that feel? Well, it felt great for us. We've been working really, really hard this season. We've had a ton of games. It's been a very, very difficult season for us. We've had a lot of losses. You know, we've had a fair share of wins, but more losses than wins. So, you know, we've been trying to take all that experience and you know, bring it forward to what counts, which is here at Eastern Regional. So it felt great. It felt like all of our hard work really paid off. So well, and I think that's I think that's an excellent point because you come out of a very tough region. There's, I mean, there's no question about that. Um, as much as we can talk about great rivalries, tough teams, when we want to look at one region, I don't think anybody is tougher than the East. And and you've lost some key people. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm not talking about they were good players. They were people that you started skating. Right, yeah. Sarah Doom, one of them, she's um, been a big, huge loss. I think our entire team has felt that this year. We miss her incredibly, and she was just such a force. She really brought us together. I was, You know, that's interesting you say that, because I was telling somebody that um, for some reason, I always felt in my head, and I saw you guys compete at Bummerbow, which was the first tournament you played, but I always felt that Sarah was kind of the glue. She was. She was. She absolutely was. And okay. A lot of this season, we've been just trying to get back, you know, to getting together the way that we were when she was around, and she was a huge, huge force that I don't think any of us really realized till she was gone. I think we always knew that she was, you know, the force that she was and that she really held us together a lot, but I don't think anybody quite realized just how much she did. So that's been diff that's been a huge challenge for that's, us. That's that's interesting. And and having gotten to do a little coaching this last year, I mean, you really start to learn that you cannot take you never take chemistry and leadership uh, you can't take that, you can't, you know, for granted because no, you can't. it it translates to to a, as much as what happens on the track as anything. Yep, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that's one of the things we've realized at the probably mid-season after a few challenging bouts was that you know coming together as a team and your leadership is one of the most important things a team can have and having that mental connection with each other and having the mental toughness that you need to get through a game and it's really a huge at this point especially at tournament time it's probably 90 percent of the game for us so you know getting back to this point has been a struggle but we finally feel like we're there so well i think if nothing else yesterday you you showed that We've, we've seen Boston in a lot of tight games yeah. that kind of slipped away from you at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, yesterday was just like, no, we're putting this one away. It's lights out. Yeah. Uh, I know that we, we're sitting here. I'm just talking to some people around the announcer's booth, and we're thinking, first half you've dominated. Does the same team come back in the second half? Absolutely. Right. In fact, the... the um, in, in taking a look at it, the score that you put up in the second half was more against them than you did yeah. in the first. Yeah. To me, that was really a critical statement. It was, and, and something, again, that we've been working on hard. You know, we're, we've been pretty much an unpredictable team for the whole season. I think everybody knows that. We recognize it. It's something we've been working hard on. And I don't think anybody knows, are we going to come out you know, strong in the first? And if we do, are we going to be able to keep that into the second? And that's always been a quick, big question mark for people out there as well as ourselves. And that's something that the last two, three weeks, that's all we've been working on. So last night was huge for us just as a team to feel proud of ourselves. So go into that second, being as strong as we did the first. Yeah, the energy in the building after the win was fantastic. Yeah. Of course, it was a highlight bout of the night. It was. 
It was Carolina Boston. It was it was the big bout, the last bout of the night, and the, the, just the explosion of excitement that came from the team. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, I mean, for me, it was really gratifying. I mean, I love Carolina, but okay. I know I know what you guys have gone through. Right. And and you could tell it was kind of like, all right, we're, we're you know we kept control of it. We got you know we got one two more games to play. And you know we're so alive for this yet, right. you know. So well, that's Carolina, it. I mean that's a that's one of the mental things we had to get over. We, you know, gone up against them at ECE this year, and then last year at regionals they knocked us out of yeah. contention for nationals and went on. And they're such a tough, tough team, and they're very good competitors. And with our history, we knew that we had to come into this just saying, okay, take it. Carolina is not Carolina. You know, you got to kind of look at them as a no-name, no-face team because in order for us to come in and try to do something here and, and move on and have some chance, have a chance at Nationals, we had to take that history and put it away and not bring it here with well, us. And I think that's a good point because you can't, if you're going to play your game, you really cannot, you, you can't come out and wait to see what somebody's going to do. No. You impose your will upon them. You go into halftime, you have to come back with that same fire and say, I don't even want to know what the score is. Yeah. Let's just keep it together. Exactly. Now, I've had, again, I've, I've had the opportunity to see Boston play since, since the first tournament. And Shelby, I've told you this too many times. <laughs> but Shelby always did stand out as, as somebody that myself, my co-announcer, and some of us looked at and said, Man, she's really going to be a good pivot, and you are an amazing pivot. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And and your style is, I think the thing. And I was sitting with a, a I was sitting one with one of the bench coaches uh, from one of the other teams last night, watching you play. And and he and I were both kind of sharing our our, uh, our whole philosophy about about Boston and about the way you play, uh, in particular because. Many times when you pivot, you pivot alone, and that's not very common anymore. It's almost always a wingman. Um, but you seem to have this ability to, I don't know, you'd have to explain it. Uh, you know, you, you kind of measure the distance, you kind of measure it out, and figure out where you need to be so that you have enough room to find the space to pull back or speed up. And Derby, I kind of look at Derby as a game of chess. Yeah. You kind of have to, add, you know, as the moment comes up, okay, where are all the pieces? You know, who, where are all the other players on the other team? Where are your players? Who's in a position to help our jammer as she's coming up? You know, where can I fill that hole? And, you know, trying to fill a hole is kind of my whole philosophy of with roller derby and my style of play is, okay, where's our hole and where do I need to fill it? And a lot of times that is the front of the pack. You know, there's been a big shift, I feel like, more about halfway through last season where a lot of teams are focusing a lot on the back in the middle of the pack which is leaving those holes up front a little bit so no and that is an excellent point because as we've learned pack control it doesn't matter where it originates from um, it always used to be a race to the front with the 20 foot rule it kind of got like it was too easy to leave people stranded right. out there but you're always very calculated in the distance that you've got to either make a move, stay out of that kind of trouble, and then to, well, I th you know, really what I think that works is your teammates get them to the speed you know you can match, yeah. and then you just make it really impossible for them to get around. I'll be honest, I sucked at the 20-foot thing. <laughs> I got so many damn penalties my so first you, two years. Okay. I just learned my lesson. I was like, in order to stay out of the box, I can't run that 20 feet. So that was just a harsh lesson that, you know, I got pounded with penalties so many times that I was like, forget it. I got to figure out, you know, how not to get that 20 foot. So. That's actually, that's actually funny. And it's funny that you, well, I mean, it's terrific that you learn from it. Yeah. Because so many times the teams end up changing the way they play instead of a player yeah. really changing their individual style to make the problem go away. Right, right. Um, but, uh, you know, if, there, if there's... <laughs> If there's any compliment that can be handed to you, it was that great bout, and I was, one of the best bouts I ever called was you in Boston at uh, our Boston and uh, Madison at the East last year. Great, right. that was a great bout. Really and uh, and it came down to the very end, and we had to wait for the score to go up. Yeah. And when it was all over with, I I turned to one of our players and I 
you know, I congratulate her on a great game. This is a little later on where you can talk a little yep, more. Yep, yep. And I said, I said, I tell you, I said, she'll be shattered. She, she is tough to get around. And she looked at me and she goes, I'm not sure who that is, but if you're talking about that, I'll clean it up. <laughs> but if you're, you know, and this was this was meant with all heart and kindness. Right, right. But if you're talking about that girl up front that I just could never get around, <laughs> yeah, she was driving me crazy. <laughs> so. Madison was so tough. They were such a tough team. I mean, they came back at the end, 18-point jam to close up. I think it was Wildberry Punch that yeah, was jamming. Yeah. I'll never Seven, forget 17 it. 17 points to... To, to make us go to the scoreboard oh to find out if they closed it up. They all. were incredible, but again, so. we're the masters of the one to two point <laughs> games. So what do you expect? Well, that one was in your favor. It all looks the right, same on right, paper, right? Right, <laughs> one of the few. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, Shelby, thanks so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. It's been an absolute Thank pleasure. Uh, now, Shelby, you'll be playing Gotham next? Yes, we're playing Gotham okay. next. Okay. Yep. Uh, the, the, and for those of you at home, if you don't understand the new bracketing system, the winner, or the winner of the Gotham Boston game will advance. Has sewn up a it's national a spot, game. essentially. Uh, the the team that does not win is going to go on to another game where they will play. Uh, the team that did not beat, that doesn't win in the Philly Charm City game. Yep. And then this year, because of the, the, there's more regions, we're not sending four, we're sending three. Right. So the fight is half over, yeah. uh, but for Boston, they, they have to pull two wins, or for Charm City, they have to pull, you yep. have to pull one of two wins, or Charm City has to pull one of two wins in order to advance. Right. But best luck to you, and Thank best you luck so to much. your team, and, and uh, you know, and all hats off to Boston probably doesn't get mentioned in the East as much as they should. Oh, Bob Knox is signing off for DNN. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Shelby. Thank you. <laughs>